Hi everybody and thanks for taking the uh, time to um, watch this video. This video is going to be a technical overview on the PA3, Fanville PA3 uh, paging gateway and it's to do with the generation 2 firmware that we're putting into the um, Fanville. This generation 2 is to enhance the existing um, PA3 firmware. Um, a lot of the inputs have been put in by ourselves here in NZ to uh, make the make a, a unique little solution for you um, so that you can um, sell it on uh, with any phone system etc that you are uh, installing so anyway so let's kick off so the new functions that have been added to the pa3 g2 is the paging server which allows a remote multicast uh, paging access this is quite smart it can be um, you dial in and the pa Three will actually read the call on ID from your telephone and match that up if it's been allowed to access the unit. It'll then play a message to say um, whatever you want it to say. Um, you, you can have different zones, different buildings, different um, connections, etc. And then you can multicast the um, once you access your PIN number, four-digit PIN number, you can then multicast into the various zones that have been set up. So that's that's point number one. Number two is that the scheduler uh, it's got had it used to have a scheduler uh, in the um, original PA3, but it had some serious serious limited limitations. So we went to work on it a bit, and now we've got a viable solution for schools and building of uh, schools, businesses, hotels motels, small business, large business, whatever basically you want to apply, you can now um, put a PA3 in there and you can have announcements for things like health and safety and all that kind of carry on, but we'll go through in more detail on that. We've also got um, integration with multicasting and the PA output, whereas it used to be just a PA output. Now we can actually um, include um, multicasting groups within it. So, and uh, we'll show you going through there. So not only can you connect to a PA at the same time, same time you can connect to um, have the PA3 broadcast to uh, an, uh, a, a multicast group simultaneously. So that's some vast improvement. And uh, also we've uh, got using the push button triggers for uh, something a little different. Um, they used to only be able to really um, ring up a uh, extension or phone number or speed dial or do some sort of action but now we can actually do lockdown alarms so each button will do a, a lockdown or an evacuation or tsunami or whatever so it will um, head through them as well so to start off and just we're just, just going to sort of touch base on various points of the PA3 we're going to definitely go through some of the, the new stuff in detail technically but we will also just um, for those of you who haven't come across the PA3 before we'll just let uh, run through a few points so the PA3 is part of the um, Fanville product offering uh, so all of the X series phones for example um, these units up here the business phones from the X um, that is an X4U through to the X210. We've got the hospitality phones, we've got the intercom phones, we've got the indoor station phones for apartments, buildings, um, hotels, etc. The PA2. So these these are all part of the same family, and the PA3 will broadcast um, anything. F um, bell schedules, time messages, etc. through these phones if you so wish. You can just set them all up in different multicast groups and away you go. Um, on top of that, it will, the PA3 will integrate with um, uh, IP speakers, etc. as long as they've got multicast, etc. Um, so you can do that. And all of these phones can be managed through the um, FDM, uh, FDMCS, which uh, we will be having a presentation on about uh, shortly. So let's have a quick product overview. So fundamentally uh, the PA3 will fit in the palm of your hand. So it's quite small, it's quite compact. It um, is quite a powerful little unit um, and will run through. So it's a complete Linux operating system in its own. Uh, we're running uh, 
128 ROM, meg ROM and 64 meg RAM. Um, we've got a status indicator on it which is going to tell you whether um, the next connected to the network and SIP registration. It's a HD audio device which is again uh, a bit head and shoulders above what you can generally get and definitely for uh, it's where it's sitting in the market in regards to its cost effectiveness. It's exceedingly um, well featured in this area so not only can we have the G722 and the uh, Opus uh, we are, could also broadcast MP3 um, like, um, music or voices or whatever across the uh, across the network. So it is a, a good, solid, high definition unit. Just um, just for reference, um, you can your messaging even through you might be broadcasting on MP3 grade equipment. If your speakers are paging speakers, e.g., horn, ceiling, um, or boxes mounted, but they are just paging units paging speakers, just don't expect the music to be responding. Uh, they're not a high definition speaker. Um, so if you're going to run music and expect good quality music coming out of it, make sure that you probably have an active speaker system or uh, whatever to receive the um, the signals from the PA3 so it'll actually, the customer won't be disappointed if you can uh, don't have the right speakers on board, just, just flag in it. Um, it's got um, two programmable keys for intercom and now also evacuation, etc. It's got a 100 meg network port. It's got two SIP lines uh, for traffic or individual numbers. Um, speaker interface, uh, it's got one for connecting the speaker. You've got your uh, microphone, you've got your audio output um, and an audio input. So the output's for connection to a PA, for example, and the input for connecting to an external music on hold. It has a TF card slot, um, and my understanding is that'll hold 32 gig worth of data. It has a USB slot, of which I've been running a 64 meg in it, and it seems to run, 64 gig, sorry, and it seems to run fine. I'm not quite sure what the maximum is on that one. Uh, the PO and it's fully PoE enabled, and the installation can be either screw to a wall or desktop or wherever you want. Uh, as we've pointed out, this thing is exceedingly um, compact and can be used in uh, vehicles. So, if you so wish to have a, uh, some sort of paging equipment broadcasting in, in a mobile situation, whether it be a fire command um, truck or ambulance, police, um, uh, marketing vehicles, political parties, that kind of thing. So I've got our uh, common command mode where you can get the um, report the IP of the um, of the device. So once you, you you plug it in, or you want, or you're at a site and you want to know what it is, if you could, for example, you just press the um, the volume uh, down key, just or volume up key, hold it down for about three seconds, and just tap it again. Okay, and that will report the IP address. Um, you can also swap it between uh, DHCP and fixed IP. By default, it generally comes on fixed IP, so it's that is uh, the 192.168.1.28, and you can switch it across to um, DHCP mode by just simply um, doing the process up here about um, uh, seek, uh, between the up and down volume keys. The um, functionality um, of the unit will tell you basically what's going on. If it's, if it's on, it's successfully registered. If it's flashing, uh, you've got a registration failed or network abnormality. If it's slow flashing, it's in a call. If we run around through some of the um, the inputs and outputs of it, um, you can see the numbering labelled over here on the left-hand side with number 1 through to 9, 10, etc. So we've got our line in audio, that's for an external audio input, um, for like a, um, a music and hold source of some description. Um, you've got your speaker uh, interface now, using a 10 watt, a PoE is basically 10 watt, okay? So you can have a 4 ohm speaker, um, 10 watt speaker, a 4 ohm 10 watt speaker connected with using PoE. If you don't have PoE and you're just using a 12 volt power supply, it's again, 
uh, 10 watt. If you want more power out of the um, unit, basically you can put a, a 18 uh, volt and a 24 volt to get 20 watt and 30 watt respectively. Basically, the higher the voltage that you're going to go in there, the larger speaker, the larger the impedance of the speaker. Your line out interface is basically for connection to a um, pager, paging unit. Um, the audio output is basically at 600 ohm single ended voltage etc. used for external headphones and powered speakers. And the microphone interface uh, number four is your um, uh, the microphone for broadcasting etc. You can connect a uh, microphone on, on it etc. You got your volume um, up and your volume down input. You've got your network um, registration indicator and whether it's uh, registered with SIP. And number eight is your um, network cable. Number nine is the power input. So it's either 12 to 24 volt, 2 amp okay, power pack. Okay. Uh, they are separate, sold separately from the um, the unit um, because it's a POE. The um, power pack doesn't come in unless you order order it separately. You've got your USB interface, and that just plugs in. That's what we'll be using for the testing, and uh, what we've been using for testing, and what we'll be using with um, the demo today. What we're doing. Uh, we have a um, a key call interface um, on number eleven. So there are two keys uh, there, key one, key two, and therefore our um, buttons um, for either dialing numbers or um, setting up um, the uh, setting up the um, emergency alarm lockdowns scenarios, etc. We've got our reset key, which um, we can um, default and restore it to factory settings. We've got our uh, SD mini. Um, card slot uh, for adding more uh, files etc on board. Okay, I know this looks a bit mm, hackish, and it is. It's, I'm not denying that at all. But um, I've ex from experience with using uh, the PA3 and even the PA2, but the PA3 particularly, I've spent a lot of time on it. Um, this is just a speaker out of any standard um, voice over IP phone that's been connected to the speaker. Why is this handy? Well, because immediately you can start telling it. It'll start telling you what's going on, and you can when you're loading up your messages and whatnot. And you want to hear what's going on. You can just simply um, uh, tell the unit to play, and it'll play out um, through the, the speaker. Um, so, for example, again, if I just want the IP address, hold it down, and then One. it starts Zero. telling me the speaker. One. Um, my Nine. advice. Hang on, just let it Nine. finish. My advice would be make one up. Um, if you've got a spare terminal, etc., and you've got a speaker lying around, chuck it in your, your bag of tricks, because um, it can be less annoying for a customer if you just plug in directly and do your testing. And when you're doing your programming, etc., you want to test that you've got the right message, and the message actually is formatted right, and doesn't sound like garbage. Um, it's it's a good it's a good simple way. So just just a um, piece of a piece of advice, really. The uh, default configuration, which we've already covered off, is basically 192.168.1.128. Um, server port is um, for the browsers um, 80. Um, if you want to switch from your um, fixed IP to your DHCP, um, the instructions are pretty much there. Um, yeah, then if, but all the programming is generally done from your web access. Um, so you just um, add your HTTP, C, uh, HTTP and uh, the IP address and the default, just like the telephones, is admin, admin. Okay, so let's get into the programming. Okay, so this is timed out. Let's have a tutu with it before. So we go to the login page, we add, add your um, admin and password. By default, they're admin and admin. 
um, strongly, strongly suggest in today's environment, as soon as you've deployed the, f the unit, um, set up a proper password for it, and something that, you know, 123 is not a password, and, you know, 321 is, isn't either. So make it a, a decent password. Um, you don't want anybody getting into this thing who shouldn't be in. So we're just going to log in. Okay. And there it is. The first thing you'll notice, and particularly those who, um, well, those who've used the Fanville before, will see that it's very similar to a phone. Technically, it is a phone. It's just got a, um, a whole bunch more functionality and features in, in the specialist area that it's working in. So it's nothing really scary about it. It's um, it's pretty standard. We're just going to run through a few things, um, and as we hit the the key four points that I want to talk about, we'll go into more detail. So. At the front here, you've got basically the model, you've got the hardware version here. There's your, your version software. Now, at the moment, we will be dispatching the PA3s out of our um, warehouse, upgraded, ready to go with the new software. The factory at the moment is getting it all ready and deployed onto their um, the fanville.com site. Um, but at this point in time in New Zealand, if you want to have um, all the functionality we've got, um, uh, it comes with the unit or contact us, we can get the um, software if you've got an existing PA3 in your stock or in your office you want to have a play with it, etc. Well, and by the way, you know, don't be afraid to ask for a, a demo unit or something if you want to um, have a go at uh, programming it, etc. Um, uptime, etc. tells you all about uh, what's going on and network and MAC address, etc. Your account is what well, you've got your main admin, admin account, but you can give um, your customers uh, a user account. Okay, so this basically gives them a cut down version of what you see now. It basically allows them to play around with the schedules and a few other bits and pieces. Okay, it's totally optional on how you manage your business um, uh, with your customers. It might be that they, they want you to do all the work instead of them. That is fine, but just be aware you can do the um, customer login. Configurations, we're going to come back to this uh, a bit, but basically this is how you would download your um, the configuration out of the unit. It downloads it in a text file and you can edit it, edit it which I do want just to quickly show you um, something you may uh, want to uh, try in the future. Um, this is where you upgrade your, um, upgrade the firmware uh, for the um, PA3. I just want to point out this is where you can r upload ring ringtones, and I've uploaded one recording here, and that's for the remote um, server, and that's a voice recording of greeting. So I, did, I will show you that a little bit later. Auto provisioning, um, you can auto provision um, from a phone system, and if, if it is um, prepared for the um, PA3 fanville, uh, otherwise you've got to your own. Um, you can have your own deployment server on, on, on site or wherever you've got it. If you've got a cloud environment, you can uh, organize it there. And you um, can also use the Fanvil um, management and provisioning server for um, the Fanvil equipment. We'll be doing a, um, a video about that shortly. So here are the tools. Now, I just wanted to stop on these because these are really quite handy. And I've not really seen many phones that can, can do what the, the, the Fanville can do. And it's all well and good when everything's going right for you, but when things start going wrong, and it, and it does, no matter what we do in the world of technology, you can't control what's happening on a customer site sometimes, and you've got to figure out what's going on. So what I like about this is that the syslog is easy to use. You don't have to use a server. You simply enable it, click it to debug, tell it you want to export it, and away you go. And once you've got the information is it's not an unending database in there it's really you sort of you get the event happening to you whatever it is and then you want to export it and you simply go export like that and it downloads the um, the file to your download folder and you can send that into us and uh, we'll, we can look at that um, so we've also do a web capture um, which is quite handy so if we do a um, uh, web capture that is now actually doing the um, it's a PCAP it's basically captured it's like a Wireshark you read it with Wireshark 
So you, if you've got a problem like it's not registering, etc., and you think, oh, why isn't this blaster thing registered? Do, it, do a uh, quick PCAP down on it, open it up and see. Like, for example, if the server's not there, um, it's not responding, well, there's half the problem. It could be blocked in your network. Or if you're actually getting it, but you're getting a 401 error back, well, that's probably going to be your um, login use or and password issue. So the server, that, so you know you're going to the server, but it's kicking you a 401. So, you, you, so stuff like that is gonna gonna save um, your issues. Once you've finished getting your capture, this will stream quite merrily for quite a while, and just go stop, and it'll um, download the file. Okay, and um, you got your diagnosis where you can ping and do trace routes, etc. That might help you in certain diagnosis. So it's got it's got a decent little toolkit in there. Uh, you reboot the um, the unit there, which we're not going to do on this time. It'd be a bit counterproductive couple of things I just wanted to point out here. You've got um, the uh, user's um, v4, IP v4 uh, um, network, but it can also go up to uh, v6, so for future use, etc. These these are your um, fixed IP, etc. Where you go and you can rename the equipment if you so wish. Your service port. This is, this is something to be aware of now. A lot of uh, customers on sites, particularly corporate areas, uh, schools, etc., now looking for H uh, HTTPS. Okay, um, so it's got more security on the browser. Um, just out of experience talking about browsers, if you are going to use HTTPS, um, I'd suggest you use Firefox. Chrome's a bit of a pain with it, to be honest with you. Um, my opinion. Um, you got your different um, settings through that you might need for the, the higher end stuff, but otherwise, apart from the fixed IP and HTTPS, I wouldn't be too worried about that at this point in time. You've got your line registrations, and um, so same as your telephone, really. Uh, pretty much all the options of uh, where you would want to be uh, running through to. I'd like to point out the hotspot. This can be exceedingly handy um, in a situation where you've got a um, hotel or a room where you've got multiple phones using a single point of registration e.g. the uh, cloud or the uh, PABX can't do multi-registrations um, multi, um, onto one registration, for example. Okay, so the, 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 all the available products are, are vendor neutral, really, in many cases. They'll register with anything, the absolute standard SIP. And um, one of the key things is that in a hotel or something like that, I might have a cordless phone and a couple of desk phones and maybe an H2 and uh, the new Wi-Fi handset that's coming out and we can um, we can basically hotspot them together and all that's really doing is calling one of the phones a master and the rest of the phones register the master and they behave as one phone as in they ring in they ring out that type of carry on so quite handy simple simple to use there is an actual presentation on how that works uh, on our um, our um, YouTube site um, set into basic settings um, Stone servers and all that kind of care, but this is the first section we want to look at. Okay, so let's have a look at this um, paging server. So, really, what we've got here is a whole bunch of um, entries that we can uh, load in, and we've got numbers down here, some of the stuff I've been programming uh, with just to do testing, and so I can add in a um, number, for example, just, just for this example, I'm just going to use our office number, so 092604019. Now, this recording here, we, I'm going to show you where that goes for, um, later, but essentially I can put a number of recordings in there, and, and it gives information to the caller who's uh, coming in, but it's sort of like a, you could, you could call it like a DESA. Um, you know, an auto attendant sort of thing, but it's not. It's uh, simply because the system's actually looking at your call on line ID, making sure you're allowed in, and then it plays a greeting that it's been told to in, in here, and then of course then it, uh, you're about to tell it uh, where it can go. So in our case here, we're going to be using 6666 for our PIN number. Um, I've got a multicast number in there which is that's the group that we've got and we can go um, the port is going to be five, that one there okay so 
just so you know that's if I go there there's the in the phone that's a 210 that's actually got uh, one of the groups in there to just test two for testing okay so we've got that and now we all we do is go down to here we've got add okay and in it goes so if we go down the the bottom here there's there's the phone number that's the recording that's going to be played um, the group etc and, and away it goes so now what happens is that when you ring in the message will be played you dial the uh, pin number you then get put through to the group that you've been told that you will go through to and you can page okay good as done now um, you can delete and add things through here now the thing I wanted to do is go back to show you where the um, the messages are actually loaded in so if we um, go to our system and our upgrade and we did touch on it a little bit there here's all the ring control stuff so you can put different ring uh, announcements etc in there there's a recorded um, voice announcement in here and I'll, I'll show you this working later but I could put two or three in there then back in my um, paging server do my drop down box and show two or three um, units uh, sorry messages etc okay so let's just move on now so now we're into the um, the intercom side of things uh, the only thing I wanted to so you've got your, your basic features here enable call waiting uh, bound outward dialing etc. Well, it's all just phone type stuff you've got your media that um, you can have my suggestion is when in this area get rid of the stuff that you don't want um, you know uh, you'd have to have a very good reason to have G729B there um, A and B the, it's not you really you don't need it but fully understand that some areas you may but my advice would be just to clean out what you're not going to use um, you've got uh, media settings down here um, in regards to speaker volume the payload of DTMF all that kind of thing uh, generally shouldn't have to change that unless there's a particular reason your RTP control protocols you've got your um, RTP settings keeping it alive and your um, alert ring info settings etc so camera settings they can be interesting you can associate a camera if you've got a security system running and recording if um, you can just set a camera up for example uh, HIK um, camera um, set it up so that when someone rings on the um, if it's going to be used as a phone you can when it rings it actually associates that security camera um, to the um, video stream um, to the caller okay You've got your multicasting here this is where you set up um, to receive multicasting being that you can receive multicasting with a PA3 as well it's been told it's got all the full multicasting uh, date and time very important to make sure you've got that all set up um, the fan will does it pretty well with all the daylight savings set up automatically um, and that heads back to our time plan so the time plan now is where we're going to do our um, oh, ring cycle, uh, bell cycles if that's what we want or we want to use it for um, health and safety so let's, let's give you an idea on what you can do with it so you've got a plan time enabled and a plan time pause enabled okay so this is one we've prepared a bit earlier so we can set this up so that we can um, basically add a bell cycle in there okay so it's one plan that runs at one time okay we can get around that by um, creating different ones and we can even have the unit so that it um, will automatically load them up okay so let's let's get in there and we'll see what we can do here so here's an example so we're going to do a uh, test 66 on it that's what we're going to call it you can call it whatever you want test 66 okay now these are the options you can do so it does a little bit more than um, just messaging so if I go down here it does a timed reboot and I can set that up uh, every 24 hours every month every 12 months that kind of thing I can then do a timed upgrade if we want to do a, um, 
an upgrade when it's nice and quiet we can set the um, the PA3 to do it itself no problem a timed echo test is where it sets a tone over all the PA speakers so that someone can do testing if they so wish uh, and a timed audio player that's what we're going to be using um, in our case for the uh, messages but this timed config just bear this in mind because this this is quite quite interesting we can actually do a timed config set the day and tide day and date that it's going to do to load up and along with the con the config file because the config fig file will be loaded into the uh, memory of the PA3 and we can actually for different terms or different times of the um, month we could do um, uh, different bell cycles so if term one term two and term three and term four we could have a different uh, bell cycle set up and the unit will automatically uh, load them up before you need to use them in a supermarket environment we've got music playing but then you might have a whole bunch of um, a, um, monthly um, specials that are coming up and wanted to be broadcast across them it will do that and will load it up at certain times so just just bear that in mind and um, I'll show you a couple other things later after we've done this um, so in, anyway in this case what we want to do is just the audio okay so we're just going to be playing audio okay which path are we going to use now do the drop down box it would come up local USB and SD okay. Um, SD card okay in this case I'm using my uh, USB card now this is quite a handy little little uh, feature here we can actually play just to make sure we've got the right one so if I'm just going to go audition you've reached Emily's paging server please enter the paging zone now okay and there's that's the paging server message that we want Okay, so let's say, I don't know if you've ever come across it, but sometimes someone sends through a, a wave file and say, yeah, yeah, this will do, but she's not that great, so we need to test it. So if I think it's around here somewhere, I'll just give that one a go. Um, we can test it, and if it sounds good on your speaker here, because at the moment I'm just using that baby little phone speaker, um, and I'm programming it up before it goes into the customer, so that's cool. So now I'll go audio. Okay, that didn't exactly sound right, okay, so it's the wrong format for this particular unit. Um, not exactly sure what it is, but it was, I actually picked that one up from um, a reseller that um, picked some up and they just didn't work properly on that unit that he's using. So let me go and find one that does work. Um, here we go, score bells and we can go audition again. Okay, nice, sweet and clear as, clear as mud. So if, um, if we want to just identify stuff, that's what we can do. So next bit, what are we going to do? Um, you can play mode in a circle, okay? Now if you're going to play a message or a bell or something like that, the last thing you want to do is put it in a circle, because I'll explain why in a minute, because essentially it's going to play for a complete minute. Um, but what we want to do is play it once. So however long the bell is, is how long it's going to play. If you only want a, a three second bell or a five second bell or a 10 second bell, make it that time and that's how long it's going to play. Okay, the next thing is where is it going to play to? So at the moment it's going to play to local, e.g. that little speaker that's on my um, unit and or be poking at the amplifier that you're going to connect to. The options are we can go local or multicast. If we go multicast, there are all the addresses, etc., that we can go through to. Or we can go multicast and local. So if I want to do that as a multicast cast, I simply um, can see, okay, that's my multicast there, that's fine, I'll go back to here. I'm then just going to paste it because that's what I've got, and there it is, it's there, and that's the group one. Codec is just going to use that there. Okay, so now, next option is what do I want to do with it? So do I want it daily? And it just goes daily on times. Do I want it weekly? And it's got Monday to Saturday and times. Or do I want to do it monthly? And it'll go monthly and times. Okay. Uh, yeah, monthly being 1 to 31. Got, got that. Okay, so in my case, I'm just going to go weekly. Okay, so if I have got a school or I'm only working these days, you know, I might work Saturday, not Sunday. Okay, 
So what's the time now? It's um, 16, so 16, um, 32, okay? So where are you? Back up there. 32. Now why do you need, why would it play for one minute? Because the minimum amount you can set is one minute and you must put it in. Okay, 33. So that's one minute. And then I go add. And that's it. The entry is added. Okay, what should happen in a couple of minutes, it should we should hear the bell go off. Okay, so but it all saves it down here and away you go. Now, quickly cover off this section here. This section here basically says when do we want to pause the bell cycle? Okay, so on term one holidays, we might say it's from the um, 6th of the 10th to the 12th of the 10th. Term two holidays might be from the 6th of the 11th to the 27th of the 1st over Christmas. Well, it's obviously Christmas holidays. But so, just again, and it's pretty straightforward. You simply go, uh, what do you want to do? So term four, I'm going to go start time. Um, okay, it's going to be from, I don't know, Sunday the 13th to kick a month over there Tuesday the 20th okay bang it's in it's entered okay that's simple and okay it looks a mess but I've been just playing around but the, the whole point being is that you just add a block and that you turn off the schedule okay quick simple easy to do okay so we're about another month go so just one thing I do want to show you it's a little fiddly so I apologize uh, but it's just something that um, it can save you a bit of time or you can save certain chunks. You notice that it had a um, we had a um, time config. So we could time that for say a school year or um, certain times of the month and then we can load up other configurations. For example we could make up a, a USB stick with uh, uh, sorry for the schools we could make up a um, a config bell cycle time that might be a little bit different than term one um, for term two and then another one for term three and another one for term four. So then we can edit the um, config file and save it and save it and load it up to the, the, the system because if we do the, the time config we can actually load in our um, depending on where it would go so it'd be you know, something like forward uh, slash slash USB slash uh, and then whatever it's, it's um, the config file name is okay and it'll load it up at uh, say midnight on the night and away it goes okay so there's that but um, the reason I wanted to head towards that was the um, is going to if I go back to system and then go configurations and I just trounce this here and then I Go rattle down this here and go to the very end of the file because don't forget to get everything. I then go copy and I want to chuck that into um, Notepad. Here is the configuration of the file. Actually, quite handy for you know looking for errors, but pretty much got every feature and then some um, and what setting it is. But what I'm looking for is down here somewhere. Uh, he says, try not to embarrass himself too much. Okay, there's all the um, DTMF numbers, etc., and numbers they're from. So we're in the area. That's all paging. Mm, it's wrong direction. So it's your DTMFs. Oh, yeah done play 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 where are you oh, here we go time plans so here's all the all the time plans from the um, from the um, the unit you can actually clip this whole set out or it, it, it might be quicker depending on how you you look at things I might go okay here's plan 16 the next one's going to be 17 they're all school bells and they're all fiddly to load in from the um, from the unit. So if I go there, go get 
make it in there. Oh, hang on. Backspace there. I'm going to... Five seconds. I'm just going to insert in there, and then I'm going to go paste. Kick that back up to there. Okay, this will be 17, so just zap all these out. I didn't say it was a fast typer. 7, 7, 7. So this is sequence 17 now. And I've decided that I just want to change the start time and stop time. So it might be I want to go... Um, 1445 to 1446, uh, sorry, 1645 to 1646, Ooh, four o'clock, 445 to 446. Okay, they've done. I want to change that to number 67. Okay, done. It's saved. I'll copy the next one down, the next one down, next one down, it, and then I can load it back up. The key thing though is I can actually just carve out this block of times so with the right headers, etc. And then I could actually have different schedules that I could load up. Okay, it's getting a little complicated. Just bear in mind this wasn't designed for a big end installation um, that would be have a better product. This is just like so every man and every man can afford to have a um, solution like this. But the point being, just it's it's it's, it's nice to pre-prepare a, a file and you can upload it, etc. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you that quickly. So I'll get rid of that. Okay, so we've done our, um, we're down to our paging, done that, the decoms, we've done that, um, okay, let's go function keys, let's, let's head down the back track here. So here is the, um, the keys, that two button keys, we've programmed them two ways. Number one, this is a lockdown, and it's actually only going to go to a PA um, unit, so it's pointing at the lockdown WAV file. It's been told <coughs> only to, um, it's, it's just going to go for the uh, local, so it's got a PA system in this one, so we just want to do that, so we can, uh, what I've got here is a, <laughs> I'll just let me short the two pins, and this will be the, the first pin, the first thing. And that'll just keep repeating and repeating and repeating until I stop it. The next one you probably won't hear because it's actually multicast in the office where all the guys are trying to work. But oh, well, whatever, let's give them a bit of a surprise. And away it goes. Yep. And that, you know, that'll get on there with. That's about three or four phones in the office blasting away there. So before somebody here comes in here gets grumpy stopped it. Okay, so it's basically a push button on, push button off. So you can use these for all sorts of things. Now I'm going to bounce ahead and get into what we do use them for. So very roughly it's, it's an overview of the programming. It's, it's not difficult um, and if you need a hand or got any questions just, just give us a call. We're here to help. Um, but let me get out of here and... Okay. So we're out of here, so let's get back in. So what do we use it for? How do we use it in the real world? Well, the, the thing is is that this is not a, um, a PBX or IPPBX um, Pacific product, okay? We'll work with anything. That's the great thing about the Fanvil product. It's IP based and away we go. And um, we're a little different than, than the other people that are out there in regards to that we are supplying, beginning to supply solutions like this. Um, so in a normal PABX, um, IPPBX, and you've got a um, paging, existing analog paging, and it might even, you're trying to get it across a, um, a fiber link, um, so you've got no copper there, and a new building, and oh, we've got this amplifier here, blah, blah, blah. We can either, um, if the PABX is capable of it, you can multicast it out of there, or we could multicast it out of, um, out of the phones, because the phones can be set up as multicasting um, masters as well. But, or we can um, 
for some reason we need to do audio etc across the um, area we would use a PA3 here so we could pipe uh, background music etc through so it would be multicast between here and then it would be going into a constant, vol constant voltage amplifier etc with passive speakers etc. Horses for courses. If you just want burst um, traffic um, you would use your PABX or your phone to um, make up your multicast group and just access it through a BLF on the phone or um, use your multicasting on your phone system, whatever suits you really. But if you're going to do a constant um, um, stream scenario, I would use two PA3s together so they're, they're streaming across um, to, each, to each device and then uh, doing the output to, to the appropriate piece of equipment. We can use our um, ring in just our standard SIP lines and ring and get into different um, paging um, groups or using uh, multicast outputs or the um, just the output with the unit answers and all page etc so that's if you um, don't want to use um, you don't have any multicast capability in your very remote areas and just to make it even um, nicer we can do it using um, your you can do it both ways either, either way so you can have these people paging back okay so um, you know, I just bounced forward a bit there just go back up so that that, that is fine so we can um, use our um, zip lines one on one one coming in one going out if you so wish okay um, then we can use our scheduler um, so our got our PABX and it's connected up to the amplifiers etc and it's doing its thing um, but then you've got the um, PA3 actually uh, managing the um, announcements so there could be the bells could be uh, health and safety it could be other other messages and lockdowns and all that kind of carry on okay so where we're going to use this let's get down to a little bit more practical nuts and bolts so PA3 for um, voice scheduler uh, can be used for your score bell system naturally okay and the the fanvil doesn't care really what you want to do it con connected to we can connect it to uh, an existing paging system we've got a number of times a week that people are coming in they've got a um, analog um, pager they need a device that can connect it up and we've got a solution for you uh, the pa3 will just do your basic connections and basic set up and we've got other higher end products if you so need it uh, value for money you cannot beat the PA3 it's just simply and the functionality of it uh, there's nothing else in the market that's going to do what it's doing so it's it's a good um, aspect to, to get going get, get your head across so this is basically PA3 it's going to be doing your multicasting bells and systems, systems and I'd like to point out we can connect up to the constant voltage system we can connect up to your passive horns etc we can connect up to um, IP devices if we so want in different groups okay and of course we can actually connect up to the fanful phones entire fanful phone range using multicasting etc um, so uh, you know we've got schools out there one one in Man, uh, Manurea down the road and um, it's just got phones in the rooms and we actually use them as the bell system and and also lock down an emergency system so and they're thrilled with it you know um, are they loud enough absolutely first complaint we got from the teachers is please turn them down they're too loud so we we came to a negotiated um, area and we're good okay so schools obviously they're they're still out there there's still a lot of particularly private schools and or schools that just haven't uh, lower deciles and whatever don't have the money so the pa3 is just right up right up the alley for them okay um, we can use it for health and safety. Health and safety is a big thing nowadays. Um, with the COVID carry on that's gone past, you're going to have um, got medical centres, um, hospitals, um, doctors. One of the things is that you can't come in with got if you're coughing. Um, you can't do this. You can't do that. Well, put a, uh, a PA3 um, running with um, a passive speaker by itself. It'll be standalone, literally. You've got a um, a speaker connected to it 10 watt speaker and it's at the doorway of the hospital coming in and there's a consistent round the, the clock message running now don't do this don't do that okay if you so wish you've got another one in the waiting room that is playing music and then interrupts with um, with your um, 
message saying, hey, if you're coughing, you've got the temperature, you've got this, please, you know, wear a mask, isolate yourself outside, go home, whatever the, the policy is. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, you know, nowadays it just is whatever the rules are for the day or that particular business slash um, hospital slash industry um, and retirement villages, anything. A lot of it's trying to notify people uh, that you, you just can't wander on in. So if you've got this sitting out in the foyer, outside, just gently playing, not, not, not being intrusive. It's just another way of um, stopping or getting people to comply for whatever you're doing. In a um, warehouse scenario, um, just bear in mind, when you're walking around the place, a lot of the signs on the walls and everything is don't walk behind a, a forklift. Um, driver, don't assume that the driver of a truck or forklift has seen you before you cross, make eye contact wave, make sure they acknowledge you and then if they wave you through go through, you know, one of the, the worst things, is you, you can watch them you know, if you sit down there and watch uh, um, a busy truck environment within an, in the first, you know, within an hour within an hour you would have seen some a close call at least, okay, and some of them, I'm not, there's a terrible generalisation but the, so just bear in mind, health and safety issues, these these are right up where you want it to be. Okay, so again, it can be uh, music if not, or just a simple 15 minutes or whatever, there's just a, a, a health and safety tip. Okay, for health and safety compliances, etc., it's, it's just a good thing to do. And because of the uh, PA3 being so easy, it's online, you can load stuff into it, change things, update things, and have multiples on a site, or just a single, it's... It's great, and, it, and it's going to add value to your solution, um, you know, without breaking the um, the bank uh, for the uh, the customer. So they get all this functionality, gives them a little bit more of a growth path, and they can add or subtract or whatever they want to do. And particularly if you've got a um, a cloud solution for paging, etc., just gets around a few of the problems you would have of um, a local on-site paging unit. And then of course you can just bolt it on in with your um, lockdown. Remote paging access, I know it can be, you think, well really, seriously, what will we use this for? It, it's surprising number of applications you, you can give in regards to someone wants to um, do a, a general notification about something that's happening and or there's uh, an important um, um, if scenario they want to announce um, as in there's been a spillage in such and such an area and someone has got a mobile phone uh, because they don't, they don't have Wi-Fi for wireless phones or something like that. And so they can just dial, dial a number and do a page across and say clean up in aisle 6. Uh, there's a gas bottle exploding in aisle 7. Um, you know, the, there's been a, um, a spill of um, chlorine, Clorox or whatever and please evacuate the building. It's it's just another one of those options and another thing that the, the PA3 can offer through. Emergency functions. Okay, so every business needs f functions for emergency evacuation, a, a lockdown. I mean, it's happening so often nowadays where half the people, you have people wandering into the office that shouldn't be in the office. Some of them aren't mentally entirely there, and I, I don't mean disrespect to anybody, um, with, uh, with with mental issues, it's, it's it's a terrible thing to have, but it's it's about the safety of the people around. It's about the safety of anyone who does come in. So look, but let's kick off with some of the applications. Tsunamis, warning for you guys up in the islands. This is something to look out for your hotels. Um, if you've got a, an IP solution, and um, if you don't want to have one of them, give us a call. We can uh, supply all phones and information for you. Um, so say there's an earthquake, which seems to be happening a lot more lately, and um, you've got a tsunami warning, simple push of a button and off goes your um, warning, as, as demonstrated earlier. Um, so that can uh, play, play through all the, um, the room phones and, and uh, star phones and go something along the lines of, this is an evacuation tsunami warning evacuation, please exit your room and head towards the tsunami um, uh, assembly point, the staff will be there indicating you please do not loiter, do not take any gear, do not just, just please move now. Okay, so whatever the greeting's going to be, or whatever the announcement's going to be, okay? You've got your school lockdown scenario, you've got your business lockdown scenario. Nowadays we're beginning to see um, people with knives, there was one in Auckland the other day, I believe someone was hurt. Um, 
and um, you see things happening overseas more and more now with shootings etc so you've got to even in a business you've got to start having a um, a plan and with this unit it, it's easy enough to plan you do, it, it's simple enough you're not over complicating things it's a push of a button and away it goes or you hit the paging and you get everybody out um, it could be if your health and safety we've, we've talked a lot about but uh, an emergency shutdown uh, factories etc if something happens they hit the emergency shutdown and alarms go off and well here's an alarm um, so what do you want it to do um, so you can uh, shut down the entire factory floor get everything to stop forklifts everything and it's just a whole bunch of hooting and hollering going on and it's just what you want it to um, what do you want the PA3 th to play and of course also the intruder alert if there is somebody who's gone into an area that they shouldn't go to and you're running around looking for them or trying to find stuff you hit the intruder alert and then that immediately um, and don't, let's not get Star Trek or anything about it. It's just, a, you know, there's, it can be a message of some description. I didn't mean that. But the, the whole thing is that we can notify all staff there is somebody where they shouldn't be and they can check the area. And uh, most staff nowadays in that type of situation will have an ID badge so they can ask who they are, who they are and all that sort of thing. Okay, so, and just another point, that everything I've talked about doesn't need a PABX, by the way. If you just want to add on to something and they say, oh, we don't want to connect to it via the phone system, we don't want to do this, fine. PoE, fixed IP, if, if you need to talk to it, talk to it, and the rest is multicast. So you don't, you know, to be honest with you, you don't even need a, um, a router. You, if you, you could have it totally isolated, standalone, if that's what you want. Again, if you've got any questions about that, but give me a call. So commercial buildings, we've got a solution for commercial buildings, apartments, um, offices, etc. after hours, um, access who's at the front door scenario. We've, uh, as earlier you saw in the, um, the product range, you've got the internal offices, the, the screens, the seven inch, right up through to 10 and a half inch, if you so want them. We've got all the intercom cameras capability, the dialing ability to go in between fours, all with video or without video. So plenty of options there, again, with the, um, the integration on the building, you can have an evacuation and or an alert going if you wish, health and safety, music on hold, everything. For your headquarters, um, they can do um, broadcast for different regions, different areas, um, public background music can be run, one click call monitoring centre, um, if you've got a push of the button or, and or again, a lockdown situation where you have to either evacuate a building or due to some event happening outside, you are locking the building to, for self safety, for safety of the, your customers and staff, and you need to tell them. So this is a lockdown. I'm afraid that you know whatever the message is going, what you want. Okay, so that's that's about it. Um, I know this one's dragged on for a wee while. I'm sorry, but it's just one of those products that you can do so much with. And um, I know times are, uh, are tough out there, so I'm hoping this will give you a little bit of a um, an edge over y your competition, etc. As I said, um, look around. If I'm wrong, you know, sure, you can get uh, a product that they can do something that the PA3 can do. I've got a, another product here that will do it and more. But the thing is, for the price, you're not going to beat this. And for the little add-on and the the, you know, the customers nowadays, they're a little, they're, they're, they are price sensitive. But they have to be um, also uh, aware of the health and safety and the benefits it can give um, and productivity, etc. So that's about it. Give us a call if you need any help. Um, just, for, just for fun, I wouldn't, if you liked what you, you had, uh, click the like and um, just also subscribe if you want to hear more information coming out from us. Uh, we're going to be doing more of these uh, sales and technical type um, videos. I know it uh, might be just that we're, we're talking a lot about it, but maybe it gives you a different perspective and uh, what, what's happening out there. So listen, the whole team up in Everly is here ready to uh, help you out. And uh, we would really welcome your call or drop us an email or whatever. Uh, again, thank you very much for your time, guys. And um, hopefully we'll catch up.